All right, guys. So I wanted to go over these charts and just give my thoughts and why I'm becoming so concerned. So a couple weeks ago, on March 28th, I made this bear, giggle, bear goggles thesis. It was like, even though we're looking extremely bullish, you know, I started looking at these charts and it was seeing a bearish thesis among all of them. So I broke it down, all my thought process, and what I was looking at, right? And unfortunately, when I said this, even though we took a lot of profit in our positions, and I called to reduce our entire um, accounts by 30%, it was not enough. Because as you can see on March 28th, it legitimately called the top of the market. Right. So this was the day. And since then, we've had constant sell pressure. Right? SPY going down from 524 to 500. You had, uh, you know, MAR top that day too was at $24, closed around 23.15. And ever since that day, it's just straight down pressure, right? That was the day I called it and just sell, 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 sell. Bitcoin was at 70,900. Right here. Since then, we've already hit 60,000. And we're trying to rally here, trying to play out what I'm calling, but I'm not so sure that this is going to happen. As I actually looked more, uh, I'll go over that later actually. You know, CLSK was around $21. I called the head and shoulders, right? was at 12, you know, $21 to 13 and a half, right? It's trying to rally, but this, this didn't get too far in my opinion. Riot went from $12 down to 776. Right, just straight sell, straight sell. Unfortunately, if you look across the market from that day, you know, everything, all the charts broke. You know, up to this point, you know, every chart was looking so bullish. You know, so bullish, every chart. Tesla, you know, it's made new lows from this day. We're making higher highs, higher lows. Everything looked so bullish, but I could see a bearish thesis. And what I warned is, you know, if inflation came high, it could put pressure on the market. And even though we got inflation, the market kind of shrugged it off, shrugged it off. And then the Israel Iran catalyst came and it didn't get enough headlines early on. So I didn't really see it or think nothing of it. You know, it just sounded like Israel and Hamas still fighting. To me, like that's how I took it. And then Iran kept saying they were going to attack them, which I mean, they've been, I thought they've been attacking each other, so I didn't think it was a big deal. And then they launched that strike of 300 missiles. And then since then, the market has literally been in price discovery mode, selling everything off, breaking every chart. And, you know, typically when things happen like this, when risk comes into the market, uh, a flight to safety happens, right? A flight to safety to safer stocks happen, happens so that, you know, they can manage the risk, which is why I think most of the mid caps, you know, dropped so much. But now after three weeks of this, you know, Iran attacked Israel and gave them fair warning, but, you know, didn't want to cause any cause any casualties. They gave them enough time. The UK and the US both helped them. And they blocked 99% of the missiles. But now they're fighting amongst each other. And Israel's posturing saying they're going to attack them back. And Iran says this time, if you retaliate at all, then we will attack and respond within seconds, 10 times harder. So the concern here is this war catalyst that if this happens, this could really get out of the hand. 
And I think what happened this past weekend was a taste or a sign of what could happen in the market. You know, last weekend, crypto dropped 30 to 40 percent in a single day. You know, all, all of the, the crypto, they were getting decimated. Right. If we look at some of the, the crypto you know, from last week, down 45 percent. XRP down 32%. Doge down 34%. You no, know, um, big panic drop. What, even though this is a panic drop, you know this is manipulation to me. This is what that looks like. That's not to say that you know they're not trying to do something else here. But let's just get back on track. So. What I wanted to do is I wanted to follow up to this post and just kind of see where we're at in the market. You know, I was like, let me try to find both a bullish and bearish thesis. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to give the bearish thesis and I'm going to try to find a bullish thesis. And unfortunately, why I'm becoming so concerned is it's becoming really hard to see a bullish thesis. You know, all I'm seeing is bearishness because they've broken so many charts, you know, when, when you break these charts, what it says is they're heading for the door and they're, they're ready to get out. So let's just go with the health indicators. So what I'm going to cover first is SPY, QQQ, Bitcoin and Tesla and ARC. So since this day, you know, we've sold off. We sold off a lot and you would think kind of like we're getting exhausted. Well, in my opinion, currently we're in a gap fill in the SPY. And typically those get filled and then you would go lower into some kind of support, which I see some support here, but this is my concern, right? When I try to do these counts, it starts getting really sketchy on, is this complete wave? Because I could argue that this is wave one, two, three, four, five. And if that's a completed five wave structure, right? Then ultimately we could be going into the low 400s. If we go into the low 400s with a war catalyst, this could crash the market and everything drop 50%. You know, that's the, the most bearish outcome. And that's what I'm concerned about considering so many charts have broken, right? If Bitcoin's in wave four, why are everything crypto related getting decimated 60, 70%? You know, I would think that they would sustain a little bit for the next rally up. Uh, another thesis is that this is wave one, two, and this is extended wave three. And this would be a, a wave four, which would still take us down to 465, which is still an ugly ass drop from here, right? 7% in the market. So 7%, if the market goes down 7%, then small mid caps are going to go down another 30%. Either one of these scenarios, the market can drop another 30%. Now, I've looked historically, I, I was looking at the last 100 years of data, and there are about 25% of the time where IWM diverges from this and small mid cap rallies while tech and large cap go through a correction. Like that's possible, but I, it's got like a 25% success rate, right? Then there is, I think one more scenario. Yes. One more scenario here where this could actually, instead of this being a five wave structure, this could be This could be a, a one, two, oh, wow, a one, two, why did I keep doing that? Two, three, four, five. And this is what I was kind of hoping for. I was actually trying to relabel that to higher and I thought we'd stop here. In which all wave fours, they cannot pass the 50% retracement. So if 495 doesn't hold, you know, maybe 494 is just a little bit under. If this demand zone right here does not hold, then I think it's possible we go to, you know, 465. Now, given it's, it's unless the war catalyst happens and it like goes into a hyper crash, you know, like that's the next probable outcome, right? Because uh, if this, this count gets invalidated, then this counts next up. 
And if this one gets invalidated, then, you know, this is a finished wave, which realistically is supposed to be a finished five wave, which means like a super crash where um, SPY goes to like 200. But let's just say that it does some type of 60% retracement here. You know, if this 50% doesn't hold, then it's like we go down to the 400. Like that's, so, <laughs> you know, out of all of these scenarios, two of them are bearish, you know, and we only have this one bullish thesis right here. And we're right above it. And typically wave four goes between 30 and 50%. Uh, 50 so it's possible, you know, we stop right here in this gap and we go higher. But it's like, there's no way we can get under this 491, 490 area, especially just break under this completely. I think if that happens, then it's much uglier than we're anticipating. And as much as I want to be bullish, like when I look at the charts individually, like it looks like a fight for safety. It looks like I'm willing to get out at any price and I'll, I'll go over that. So if we look at the trend, let's see if we were able to find the trend. The real trend was this two day green cloud. And when we broke under this, like that was the sign, which was about Friday, last Friday. Since then we've broken down. Now, typically we can find support here too. So that's a bullish thesis, right? So he here's a tap, here's a tap, right? Usually in uptrends, here's one, here's one. Here's a little bit of an overshoot. Here's one, you know, here's one, here's one. So there's a thesis here where we rally and this would be the best case scenario. Like this is the only best case, good scenario, right? Cause if we go down here, I think a lot of the charts are breaking a lot worse, which means a, a lot more of a drawdown. So the bullish case here is like 492 holds, right? 491. Like we don't really spend much time under this 50%. And typically you want to see a daily um, bottom wick, right? So like, this is the best case scenario right here. And even if we go here, like this could be truncated to where we barely can go higher, especially if the other drama keeps going on. So that's on the chart, You're right? And then if I go and I look, um, his, historically, on it looks like this RSI, we usually find a bounce in this area too, right? And if we don't find a bounce in this area, we go a lot lower, right? It starts a downtrend. So that's something to keep in mind. Something else I don't like is the fact that is that our MACD is going red, all right? The last time we went red here was this correction. And although we saw two weeks of a rally, right? I don't know if you guys were part of this, but most stocks dropped 60 to 70% from this, 60 to 70%. You know, so if, if this MACD crossing is anything like the last one, like this could justify the 465 area where it gets really ugly, right? Now, even if we were to rally here, like you see that's like an A, B, C, D, E, like you would think that you would get something similar. So there should be a pop unless, you know, if this is like a completed wave five and we're supposed to go down to the low 400s, they could use that war catalyst to drop us and slam some 465 in just days where everything loses over 50% value. And that's what I'm concerned about, which is why I've been starting to go cash. Because individually the stocks just, they're not bullish anymore, they're not. And with this unknown catalyst, like <laughs> even though we're down a lot, it's like you, you're, you'll have an ego selling here until everything drops another 50% and then you'll be thankful. And that's, that's kind of the, the mentality that I'm having right now. So, at this moment, and like, I don't know, maybe to, tonight Israel says, you know what, we're not going to attack, blah, 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 and we fucking rally, and this literally becomes a bottom of my camera. Like, this is hopium, but, and then this goes green again. That would be amazing. It really would, but I just don't see that happening. That's hopium. So that's SPY. Let's go QQQ. Dealing with the same thing here, you know, where... You know, this this could be an extended wave three or one, two, three, four, five, right? Or this could be one, two, three, four, five. And this is a completed wave. And if that's a completed wave, then QQQ would go down to this area, 
this 330 to 350. And that's, that's like the bullish case for that, right? But if it's not, right, if that is not a completed five wave, then what we could hope for is either this is a way for to where we can't get under 395, which is still fairly far away, right? I'm trying to see if there's another another bullish thesis. So if this is a one, two, and then this is a, a three-wave structure, this is one, two, three, four, and that'd be five. Okay. Right. Okay. That makes sense. If so, you know, <laughs> the first stop down here for this thesis would be 395. That's still pretty far a ways away. And unfortunately, even though it seems far away, wait till I show you the mega caps. And then it doesn't seem like it's not so unrealistic. Especially if we start printing under this area. Now, in my opinion, this is already starting to look like a head and shoulders. Maybe something like that. Or maybe that's already done. You know, I mean, you can already see that this was a head and shoulders. Right? But does it just extend? Because, like, that actually would make sense from this pivot low where we go across. And then what it would do is it would actually run into the 200 day moving average, which is a pretty good support line. It's actually the support line for the for this last drop, right? It's on the weekly. Wow, that just looks so likely. Look at that. On the weekly, the 50 moving average band, the cloud right here, also support. So once this trend broke, this support trend, which you can see it did, right? Now we're broken under this. It seems like this is inevitable. And that's going to be the line in the sand for the trend, because now we already have a trend line that says we've been supported here once. So if we broke below this, it's the same as this concept, right? So we were safe, we were safe, and now we broke. And now this trend is no longer valid, which means we go lower, because that's an uptrend. That's the bullish trend. Now that this broke, you need to look at the next time frame of, of a bullish trend, which is this one. I mean, you can kind of see this many times through other aspects. Okay, like, like the 100 weekly moving average, support, support. You know, given there's some shooting, shoot ups around here and overshoots. But overall, between the 100 and 200, it seems like the support area, right? Support area, which is, tip, is what I've said is the case, right? The, between the 100 and 200 during a bull cycle is always a good time to buy. And then this was the bear market. And then where would we be at? I mean, the, the weekly moving average isn't even gapped out away from this. So if it got really bad, then that would tell us that this is a complete wave five. But the first stop looks like it's 396, right? It really does. Unless there is, let's see if there's any kind of, oh, interesting. We were to say that one, two, three, four. That doesn't seem right. I mean, in a perfect world, let's say that that's a balance with the 100 day moving average and the 50% retracement of this pivot low. Could be possible. I think the news catalyst is going to be everything, though. Let's see. Uh, okay. Something else that has me concerned is I've used this pretty regularly 
this ADL line. And you can see that this ADL line has been resistance to the top of the market two other times. Now, sometimes we have one of these, which is what I'm hoping for, for our wave five, right? It gets a pullback and then it goes higher. But typically, if you have an ascending support and it starts breaking under it, it goes, and this one was a bad one. That's the July one. And now we're starting to break under this. And the thing that makes me really uneasy is we broke under this whole consolidation support. So now we have this pivot low, this pivot low, right? Which makes me believe that this is going to fall off a cliff. And I will show you the other charts which will justify that. With Bitcoin, man, I, I don't know. Like even if Bitcoin, like if other stuff crashes, it looks like Bitcoin might do something different. Uh, the accumulation is at all time highs and we're actually making higher highs right here. You know, Bitcoin's currently up three and a half percent, but unfortunately, even though it's up three and a half percent, we did not even break the previous day high, which is bearish. I honestly think that this might break. It's 59,800. And there is a scenario where wave four, you know, I, I, ABCDE corrections usually stay above the 38% retracement, which is what this is, right? Now we can go to the 50% retracement and it still be valid, which is about 56,000, which would then cancel out the ABCDE correction. And we could find support at the 100 day moving average. And the reason why I think this is actually probable is if you look at the trend, when's the last time it hit it? Right here. So it's been respected once. I think this, this would be the true line in the sand, right? If we start printing under this 100 day moving average, then this trend is also over, which is the overall uptrend, right? Now you can see that this, from this pivot to this high, was the uptrend was the blue cloud. And now we broke below it, back tested it, made a lower low. So now, this uptrend is the next thesis, right? Now it's possible we ABCDE this out and go higher. I mean, the ADL line really looks like that, to be honest. If you look at the RSI, usually we get a bounce around this bottom support line. And so far we're trying. But as soon as we broke this RSI right here, this is sending support RSI, just like this one. Right, it's just pretty much been a downturn like this, same thing. If we really start giving this up, then that's not a wave five at all, right? And if that's, sorry, not a wave four. If that's not a wave four, and what that would tell me is this is a one, two, three, four, five, and that's completed five wave structure. And if 56,000 doesn't hold, This 44,000 to 37,000 is actually possible. And let's see if that would align with any type of weekly moving averages. So if we broke down here, we would fall into this demand, this you know month and a half of sideways consolidation, which becomes support into the blue cloud. I mean, that could be justifiable, even though really see too much usually the week so in this cycle the weekly 20 moving average the red line was the support and trend indicator this one was the 20 the green band green band throughout that whole time and then as soon as we broke that green band over right and then here was the blue band try to do the blue band but didn't respect it so to say this blue band is would be the support, you know, there's not even a previous indicator for it. It'd be the first time, but it is a plausible one, especially if it was in both of these together. But at this moment, you know, you you would argue that it's the green band. So, you know, maybe we hold this, like I said, right? Maybe we hold this and we rally from here with my original thesis of the ABCDE, and then that would be confluence of this cycle. And how amazing would it be if it did this? <laughs> Right? How amazing would it be if it did one of those rally straight to like 100k? Um, the ADL line definitely 
makes it makes me think bullishness to be honest the relative strength the discounted um prices over last weekend through that fake ass crash that they did on low volume so i did a video on the rsi you know there's a like this is a bullish case in my opinion and the bearish case is you know a weekly close under fifty six thousand. because if we get a weekly close under fifty six thousand in this 100 day moving average then that's a completed five of structure right and uh yeah that's not good you know that says you know much lower under 50k most likely even though if we did break under this i think we would get a bounce here just because that is consolidation that's support that's demand you know and if we broke under that then you would have to find the next bit of demand right which is in this area so you know i keep saying spy qqq tesla bitcoin are like the internal health indicators and bitcoin is holding one for your life but realistically you know this holding could be for a crypto rally while equity equities crash right like that's actually possible because the adl lines look better on crypto they really do like if you look at soul look at this even though it's down drastically look at that it's sitting near highs they have as many shares as when they were at 200 dollars what's happening it's literally bouncing off of a 50 percent retracement on the 100 day moving average curling you know i have this as a bear thesis but you know i could be wrong you know this that could be some type of wait for because it's it's respecting it at this moment so what else is there oh, litecoin completely went into the weekly demand bounced right back out of it it is curling up and if there was a place for a bullish thesis it's to not get under all these moving averages right once you get under all the moving averages crash once you get under all the moving averages crash right if there was a place for this to find support it would be right here which is why i'm like low-key bullish on crypto which i'm hoping that it transfers into equities but where are we at we're literally near all-time highs with the adl line like crypto looks bullish to me it's kind of crazy uh what else is there it's like xrp algo all of these look at this xrp is literally at a new high with accumulation right like a possible abc finish wave right that's what it looks like to me like this is a massive abc and this is the abc of it fell into monthly demand into the anchor vwap this is bullish low-key dude it really is algo usd literally double bottomed they were they were less than 0 0.01 of a penny away from invalidating this thesis and they couldn't do it right it's like there's there's a bullish thesis here for crypto but if you look at spy if you look at qqq let's look at tesla this is my concern so hundred dollars to three hundred dollars right in june two, in 2023 from january 2023 to july 2023 it rallied from a hundred dollars to 300 mind you that's something else i want you to realize even though it's scary looking <laughs> Tesla rallied from $100 to $300 in seven months, right? A quick, powerful move is easy. And the thing I'm concerned about is, you know, I made a video about this and I said, if we start printing, so this is a volume profile and it represents all the shares traded in this area, right? If we start printing under 160, especially this 158, because this is the little volume bar, 158, 159, then we start trading under all the shares that have been traded since January 2023. But let's look again. If we start printing under this area, we start trading below every single share traded since November 2020. That is crazy. It's like, if there's going to be a place it needs to be here, it really does. Otherwise, you know, but God, like, it's, is this actually possible? I'm actually going to do this. Otherwise, is this a massive head and shoulders? If we have some type of super crash, it could happen. 
to be honest. I mean, if you look at it, um, it's very possible. We're literally starting to print under 95% of all shares traded since November of 2020. Everyone's underwater with a massive monthly candle, monthly setup of a invert or a head and shoulders, right? Leading into a catalyst that could crash the market. And if SPY has finished its five wave structure and it goes to the low 400s and QQQ has actually finished its five wave structure and it goes to the low 300s and, and like, is, is Tesla going sub 100 out of the question? No, it's not. It's actually not, right? It's not. And it's very possible with the panic that ensues with capitulation event, right? And then that's not even including the economy. Like what if inflation starts spiking up again, right? But this is a possible thesis, right? It actually is. We are now under 95% of all shares traded since November of 2020. Now, let me give the line in the sand here. There's a bullish thesis here. And this is why I haven't sold it. There's a bullish thesis here. All right, so even though we're under this value area low, there is a gap right here, right? And right now it's in it. And if we drop down to 146 area, right, then we get a gap fill. Okay, that's, that is a little bit last line in the sand support. Let me show you some other stuff. Uh, I really hate that this happened. This is sending support breakdown, but ADL line, right? This is accumulation, right? Like the highs over there at 400, you know, they only had 11.6 billion um, accumulated. And here they have over like near 14 billion. Like we're near the highs of all of accumulation, even though, you know, we're down 60, 70%. I think if you look at this, this ascending support line has been respected one, two, three, four times. Yeah, and this was what called the bottom at 160 last time. And I bought in, right? I think if we break below this, that's a bearish occurrence. I think, you know, if this is going to happen, which this honestly looks like a head and shoulders. And if, as you can see, a lot of head and shoulders plays out. Here's another one. All right. <laughs> so I'm a little concerned here with this ascending ADL line, but this is, you know, this is definitely possible. Now, if that happens, I think that's going to, like, if that happens with this next thing I'm going to show you, uh, I think it's very possible Tesla goes sub 100. Let me show you this. Okay. This is the trend since the beginning of the rally, right? If you look realistically, I mean, it even did it here. I mean, it broke below it, right? But it overall supported it here. Also, this drop to 100, 325 moving average, weekly moving average, uh, the purple line, it was supported here too, right? We got a re bottom wick rejections and that marked the bottom, right? We're currently trying to bounce off of it. So that's that with the gap fill. Like this is the only bullish thing technically that I can see. But I think if we start closing under this 146, 145 area, then, and the ADL line, you know, if we start printing under this 145 area and the ADL support line breaks under this ascending support, right? Uh, that most likely means Tesla's going sub 100, right? But this, Let's say we get under the go to this and we we bounce here, right? Um, Tesla reports next Tuesday. Let's say it bounces here with it bouncing off this. I think that is actually an extreme likelihood. By the way, it's also a descending support, right? I think it's also a high probability of it being the bottom of fucking Tesla, like actually bottom of Tesla, where we go to seven hundred dollars from here, right? And that's why I haven't closed any of my position in Tesla. Because honestly, my, my option contract, even in my personal account, is in 2026. And realistically, 
you know, it doesn't move that quick. But if Tesla goes to $700 by 2026, then I make a thousand percent on those contracts. And we, we have to realize this, if Tesla can go from 100 to 300 in seven months, right? If it's discounted this much and it drops sub 100, I can tell you, like, I'm not joking when, so if everything becomes discounted, like let's say the market crashes, I'm going to consolidate my, my funds because if better companies become discounted at a better price, then why should I be in shitty stocks, right? So we got to keep that in mind too. But let's say Tesla goes sub 100. If Tesla goes to sub 100, there's no scenario where I don't see it literally getting back above 500 within five years. It's not. Like, let's go ahead and just think about it on a fundamental level. So yes, the electric vehicle cars are starting to struggle a little bit just because of the high interest rates, but those interest rates should be cut by the end of this year, right? And sooner, right, likely, more than likely than later, right? So if interest rates start getting cut, then that increases. But if you actually look at the profit margins, the growth of the company, it's it's still growing. Like, the, like none of these are making lower highs in the, in the sense of performance fundamentally. And that's the electric vehicles. But now you have to realize uh, a few things. One is Elon just announced FSD for $99 a month so that people can actually try it, right? He announced a breakthrough with uh, FSD version 12.3 and it's a thousand times better and it's growing rapidly. Uh, he's announced that Grok version 1.5 will be better than ChatGPT. He has RoboTaxi unveil in August, right? Like he wouldn't have announced the RoboTaxi unveil in August if he doesn't think that he's figured out FSD to where you can large scale it and have this happening within the next year, right? Then you have to realize that he has Grok, who's going to be better than ChatGPT in the next few months. And that's going to be the AI brain that is in the car, right? That is going to be able to talk to you in the car, to be able to manage everything. And then once it becomes at the level of aptitude that AI is expected to be, the systems that he's going to be able to have with that and innovation with that. Like there's so many bullish cases in Tesla over the next year or two, and especially in the next six months, that it seems very unlikely that all of this isn't going to start getting priced in. And for that reason, I would not be surprised if next Tuesday's earnings is a buy the news event. You know, for the last few quarters, uh, it's been a sell, right? It's been a sell, it's been a sell, it's been a sell. But if the sending ADL line gets supported on, on the daily, and we're close to it, if the weekly 325 gets supported in this gap fill, like this is the only gap from this pivot, right? So if it fills this gap, actually, no, there's a couple more to be honest, I can see. <laughs> this is the only major gap from this previous previous pivot low. And if all these get filled with this descending support, like this could be the pivot of the Tesla stock, right? So for that being, like I'm really going to hodl my contracts unless it starts printing under like 140, right? And uh, I think it's a good risk reward because what's, you know, a couple hundred dollars for a thousand percent return, right? I bought the contract at $1,800 in the Patreon account. I have like $15,000 worth of contracts in my personal account, but what's five, $700 for $18,000 that, because this is a long-term trade to me. This isn't a short-term trade. This is, I hold it literally until 2006, right? And for that reason, like I'm not, even though it's breaking, some of the short-term levels, like I'm like, okay, let me let me give it this chance. If we start getting under this, and let's say there's a crash, right? And there's a crash and I lose $800 in it, then it is what it is. But I can promise you, if we start going under 100, I'm gonna buy the most furthest out contracts of double the strike price. So if we get down to $80, I'll buy $160 strike price contracts. Furthest out I can possibly get. Because if you ever look at these, right? Like let's say, Like currently, you can get June 2026. Actually, let's, let's just do December 2026. 
And right now, price is 150, so let's do 300. And by 2027, do I think we could get to, I think we can get to 900. If we were to rally here, I think by 2027, we'd get to 900. If we got to 900, at the end of 2027, that is a 2,400% gain. 2,400% gain, right? And if you go get it any, any sooner, then you get the gain earlier, right? But it's like, you could go all the way to the, the expiration day and you get it. Let's say you go all the way to the expiration day. It only gets to 375. You know, you're still looking at 200%. Like what? Right? Like, like this is where like I would start throwing the boat in if Tesla starts crashing. But right now, we are at a possible bottom. And I really think, like, this is the trend, guys. This is the trend since $16. That's the support trend. If we give that up, we go lower. Like, you can always see it. Like, this blue cloud was, was the support trend, right? Once we broke it once, lower high. What happened? Like, you can see it all at all times. There's always a trend. And once it breaks that trend, it goes to the next way of finding a trend. So since this, literally the beginning of the super rally of Tesla, this is the support level. We are at this support level, right? We're, we are right there. So, you know, this is the only, like, this is the bullish catalyst, right? Even though we're, we sold down, it's like Bitcoin and Tesla, like there, there's a, a support line here. There's a bullish thesis for support. SPY, QQQ, they look terrible. All of the individual stocks, they look terrible. It really does. But, you know, um, and if it's, if this gives it up, right, let's say Tesla gives up this 140 area and Bitcoin gives up 56K, then I'm going to really, I'm going to say that I think, you know, this is actually a completed five-wave structure to the fullest. And we go, like we have a, some type of crazy crash, right? And that's why I started making money available. Like, it's crazy because three weeks ago, everything looked amazing, you know? Three weeks ago, Mar Mara was 70% higher. Like, to get back to what we, where we was three weeks ago is literally 60 to 70%, right? In three weeks, Mara dropped I think it's like 40%, 37% from the bottom of this. If I went higher to the very top when we sold it like 23.88, nearly 40%, right? And, and that's like, so Tesla is like a line in the sand, which is why I'm not selling everything. But if all of this starts breaking, then it's like this, this sell-off is much bigger than we think. And even though it's going to hurt our ego and you think you lost a lot of money, like it's nothing if you compared to if you lose another 50%. And I think if Bitcoin starts giving up this level, if Tesla starts giving up this level, you know, and if we start making lower lows in Mara, Riot, CLSK, like all of these stocks, like I think a super crash is happening and we have something to be worried about. ARC is also a really good representation of risk on risk off. And what I mean by that is when ARC is rallying, pretty much the whole market rallies. You know, a bullish thesis here is it's currently trying to find a base at 325 moving average in between the 50 and 61%. You know, if this is a five-way structure and this is an ABC, you know, we don't want to see it really get under the 61%. So if ARC starts giving up this 61%, then you know, maybe this isn't even a five-way structure type thing, right? Maybe this is a one, two, one, two, three, no, one, two, three, four, no. Anyways, you know, if we find support here, and, and that's the thing, like we could find support here. And if Israel doesn't attack, you know, like there is a small window here where like this could be the bottom for a super rally. It really is. It could be. But it also could be a breaking point for a major crash. And that's why I wanted to make money available. And it's like, if it's a super crap, and like the thing is like, I don't want to completely go risk off 
expecting a super crash because it's like how often are people right when they expect a super crash right so and it's like if we wake up one day and our account is down another 20 percent, but everything broke i'm going to sell everything at a loss and it's going to fucking hurt everything's going to hurt everyone you know but i'm i would i guess i'm going to say that i would rather risk another 20 percent my portfolio if, if that was like a single day loss uh if this is the bottom of a major rally right because like it's a much less probable that it's a super crash but it's possible like i'm seeing everything align like it's, it's, if the thought if spy is a five wave structure completed if qqq is a is a five wave structure completed if bitcoin is a five wave structure completed if tesla gives up 140 and it's under every single like 95 percent of all shares traded since 2020 of november right there's nothing bullish about any of the main health indicators of the market. If Apple, like you guys got to realize, look, what happens here? If Apple starts giving this up, it's under every share traded since April 2023, right? If it was ever to find support, it needs to be in this area, right? Is there like a line in the sand type situation? We have a weekly moving average, 100 moving average where it's found support before. It's found support here before. It's found support here before. It's overshot here, but it's found support there. Typically between the 100 and 200 is always a good support level in general, right? Support, support, support. Like this is typically between the 100 and 200 weekly is where you always want to buy for bull cycles. Look at that. Since 2009, right? Since the, ra the crash after the crash of 2009, and if you even bought around the 200, you were fine, right? Since 2009, if you bought Apple anytime, it was between the 100 and 200 weekly moving average, you're you are in the money for the next cycle. How beautiful is that? Right? Next cycle. Next cycle. All the way up that. Look at that. Next cycle. Right? You bought around this area. Let's not even say you got the complete bottom. That was a 52% rally, which is a lot for Apple. Right? Now, the bullish case here is typically, I want to say, as long as we don't trip this low, but a higher low right here. And usually when you reclaim something that you break through, now this was a, a complete downtrend. So I'm not gonna use that one, but let's see if we have one somewhere. Usually when you break back above and you have a higher low at some point and it, it becomes a support, it's more probable that it becomes a support. And then when it doesn't become support, you make a lower low. Here's one where it breaks under, gets back above it, finds support on it, goes higher. And that's what we have to hope for here, right? We have to hope for a Apple double bottom right here in which Tesla and Apple uh, lead the market the next rally. You know, Otherwise, I mean, realistically, it could even do it and that still be a head and shoulders eventually. That would be nuts. But... You know, it needs to, to hold the support. But the idea is if if SPY, QQQ, Bitcoin are all five-way structures, then the, it's a bigger crash, and especially if there's a catalyst that caused mass panic like Israel and Iran fighting, like the risk of BRICS alliance and NATO fighting each other, the risk of China getting involved, right? Like a world war type scenario. If Apple gives up this lower low, or this, this pivot low, this important pivot low, right? This 100-day moving average. Now, it could go down and it finds support here, right? Uh, what Tesla gives up 140, if it starts giving up that 325 moving average and it's under every share of trade since 2020, if all that collectively happens, then I'm going all cash with everything. Because if everything drops another 50%, you're going to be happy that you sold. But at this point, I would like, like what's the probability of that happening? And there's still bullish thesis is right even though spy and all of them look bad there is a last leg of defense for spy and qq apple is right here you know tesla's right there bitcoin looks bullish all the crypto looks bullish right so there is a bullish scenario in even though i'm very concerned about the super crash i'm willing to risk you know for this being the bottom because if this is the bottom then we're going to get paid now, 
Uh, let me show you one more thing. So this chart is a representation of uh, top six mega cap stocks, and it creates a chart within itself. And realistically, this looks like a completed, um, this is either an entire five wave completed structure, which would be the super bearish case, or we drop down to this 50% retracement area for a wave four, right? right. Like that's possible, but right now we are in demand, right? On the daily. Right now we're in demand on the daily. So it could find defense here. It could. And which that's, you know, that's arguable. And if it, if it found defense here, like this could be the way four because way four can be between, you know, it can actually be even be shorter, like 23%. Way four can be really shallow if it's strong enough. And if, but we would need a bullish catalyst for it to be strong enough, right? If it's not, then what are we looking at? Now we can see the trend for this rally since January, 2023 is the blue line, right? Originally it was the green support band, but now we've broken this unless, you know, maybe we don't break it. Maybe we rally a little bit and then we go higher from here, right? Like that's a last leg of defense. But if we start giving this up and pulling away from it, then the next support trend is this one, which is down, you know, how far is that away? 10 to 12%, 10 to 15%. That would also coincide with, I believe, this being a possible way forward down here. Okay, so then let me show you what like added, what has me scared. If we look at the mega caps, like if, if it gives it up here, and we're so fucked, you can actually see relatively, Nvidia has been following, has managed to stay above the, the blue cloud. And when it hasn't, it's went through a correction. But what has me a little concerned is, you know, like this could be an ugly ass head and shoulders. But more importantly, if you look down here, like there's this consolidation and then there's here this support and then this support, but it's pretty much been straight up. So like if momentum starts going to the downside, panic can ensue, right? Panic can really ensue in which I think the probable outcome would be it goes to at least stops, makes a pit stop here, support here, support here, right? Yeah, I would say the 100 daily moving average, which could take us down to 682. If NVIDIA drops down to 682, like, it's a bloodbath. Everything's dropping a crazy amount, you know, 19%. And you got to realize it's not just NVIDIA. Like, look how toppy everything looks, right? It's like, it broke through the sending support. So now this is a trend change. Now, given we can find support here, and that's what we can hope for. We are going into earnings season. Usually they rally because they all outperform, but you know, it's not promised. But you know, there is a case for all of these being so top heavy that if momentum picks up to the downside, it could be a super crash. Right? It's like all uptrends with not really any consolidation. Like a real, if we start dropping under this, it could easily drop to this. Like you have this consolidation, but once you get through this, it's like pretty much down to here. Microsoft, like, look how ugly this looks. Starts trading sideways. Now I can find support here, but the support line was the blue line. And now we broke below it, back tested it, made a lower low. So what's the next support line? There's not even one from this rally. It's the 100 to 200, between the 100 and 200, right? On the daily. Let's see if there's anything else. Oh, there we go. We have one tap on the 50 weekly band which could take us here, which I'm pretty sure is right where the 100, 200 is. Yeah. Pretty much the 200, right? That could be a SR flip, right? This ascending resistance becomes support in the blue cloud, right? If all of this, if every mega cap dropped this much, like everything's getting decimated. Which is why it's so important that this stuff finds support, right? 
you can see for the most part between the 100 and, and the 50 blue band support through the blue band all the way from 100 from $80 it stayed above the blue band broke below it but then found support the blue 100 moving average right now it's starting to hit this I think they they report next Wednesday so a day after Tesla right but the thing is like if they have the catalyst to drop this and if they want to use Israel and Iran with war like they can like look at this if it drops under this if there's no volume for like, how much of a volume gap is that there's no shares traded in a 13% gap like we could easily get to here but then when you get to here like there's still not that much like there's no support until you get into until you get into like this area <laughs> right like if you go to like the monthly i'm sure that's a, a monthly demand zone yeah look at that monthly demand zone right here right one two three four four months of demand other than that everything is just higher high higher high higher high right like panic could really ensue and if they crash these then it's going to crash everything google uh, you also have the possibility of a head and shoulder right here. Let's see with Google, like Google just literally came out of it. And they they report next. So there's so many mega caps that report next Thursday, right? So it's like either they need to take us higher <laughs> and lift the market up, or if they start all giving up, then we're fucked. You know. Um, Microsoft hasn't really rallied that hard. It's been a lot of consolidation. So I think this would be really choppy to get through. Like that's months rather than days, right? Like this would seem fairly easy to get through, but you're not just getting through this, you're getting through all of this, right? So if we were to start dropping, I would think like this area would find really good support. But that looks like multiple months of consolidation, right? Yeah, monthly candle, look at that, all of those. So that would end up being a very good support level. And you can see, on the monthly green cloud, it's been supported twice already. Well, actually, one, two, three, pretty much the entire time, right? So if it dropped down to this area, 135, then that would be a buy area, right? It's just, are we gonna have cash available? And if this happens, we'll take the first sale on the first day, and then we'll all cash, and then we'll let a super crash happen, and then we'll buy that dip, and that dip will literally make us millionaires. Because, during the worst case panic, options get discounted and can give thousands of percents of return. So if we sell, uh, actually, I'll hold the, the idea until after. Um, this is a head and shoulders on AMD. It's already been selling off. It's down 6% yesterday. Uh, something else I wanted to point out is this, even though everything's bearish, this is bullish to me. Like this is one, two, three, four, five taps of support. So I, and if it gives this up, then you can see that volume gap in the accumulation phase, which would go down here. And if that goes down here, you can pretty much say that that would be at least an 11% drop for the next move down, right? But I, I, if I start seeing this go under this and we see a daily close under this, this would support the bear thesis. But Right now, today's close was a bull thesis, right? Uh, currently, with Netflix, it's down after hours. They said they're no longer going to report their subscription numbers. Like, what? That's crazy. Like, that's not even logical. What are you talking about, bro? That's stupid as hell. Like, you're not getting away with that. <laughs> but, but what's happening here? In my opinion, like this was a good short setup going into the earnings. That's a head and shoulders. One, do you, do you see that? And realistically, it goes there. And we're already halfway there. So what's the odds that we get down here? Fairly easy. You know what's really scary? Look at that. If we get here and we give this up, that's the next gap down. Like Netflix has the pop the risk of dropping another 14 percent it's already here but yeah another 14 15 percent and if we sold it right here it would be you know 20 percent but and that actually looks like it's already playing out right it's already down in after hours 
like this one is already playing out. And it's like, if one of the shoes starts to fall, then I really think it's possible all the shoes fall. Right? So, let me see if there's anything else. All right, explain the Apple one, Tesla one. Like the single stocks, like if we look on our Patreon, like all of these, pretty much every chart book, right? It's like this, like, and the funny thing is like they used a lot of this stuff as excuses to get out, but these are get out at all cost candles in my opinion. Like, and they're starting to accumulate some shares here. And that's what's been happening the last two days in my opinion. What they're doing right now is they are building liquidity. And what that means is, they sold all of these shares at a 40% discount on most small, medium cap stocks. And then they're like large cap and all those are down too, right? Now that they sold all those shares, they're buying some of those shares back and they rallied a little bit and they're building liquidity. So what they have with these shares is they're making a little bit of a higher high so that if the bearish chaos comes, if Israel attacks Iran, they have more shares to sell. And when they go to sell those shares, half of them will, they'll probably make a little bit of money on, but then they'll lose some of it. But most importantly, they have enough shares now to break the support that's being built, right? Like this is a little bit of a support being built, two side-by-side -side candles, right? Algo, side-by-side -side candles, ARC. ARC's also trying to support itself at 325. I actually think I already mentioned that. Riot, three days of sideways candles. Right, they're trying to build a little bit of liquidity, and uh, something to note with Riot is this is a double bottom ADL line, right? So I think if this ADL line makes a lower low tomorrow, then I think that's extremely bearish. You know, big, like something that also made made me start panicking is the fact that Baba, like my China thesis, completely is getting unraveled, and China is even starting to sell off. Like Neo literally gave up four dollars. It's crazy. Um, this looks like a look above and fell. Like this is what I'm worried about with the the miners, right? So we found support, rallied up, made a higher high, but now it made a lower low. This is an extremely bearish occurrence. Right? So in my opinion, I think they're starting to accumulate shares to try to build liquidity um, based and they're going to do whatever happens based on, I think, the outcome of, of the war. You know, I think it's, if the war doesn't happen, I think we do get a rally. I think there's there's a catalyst there for it to happen, like the excitement, the sentiment change. But I think if Israel attacks Iran, and the thing is, like, it's more probable that Israel attacks Iran than doesn't, right? Let's look at Mara. Mara also is double trying to bottom here with this little support. Like they're trying here, right? And they made, they tripped these lows. See, I think CLSK is the same, right? Right here. It's trying to really hard and it rallied. And this is, this is exactly what like RBLX could look like though. Now it made higher highs right here, but then if we break below, that's extremely bearish. So realistically, if it breaks this low, it's because everything else is bearishly happening too, in my opinion. Because this is also a thesis for it being a wave four. If it's a wave four, then it should rally from here. So there is a bullish thesis for this base, and but there is a bullish or bearish thesis for a super crash. Talked about that. Let's try to formulate this into a plan. I think it is possible tomorrow we gap up, just like we have the last two days. Unless Israel attacks them tonight. If Israel attacks them tonight, then we might have the crash tomorrow. But what I think is going to happen and what's been happening is I think if there is no drama tonight, I think we gap up tomorrow. And I think the same thing is going to happen where we have some type of rally in the morning. But I do not think or expect smart money to hold, the month, hold their shares into the weekend. So, And also Bitcoin happening is tomorrow. So if we gap up tomorrow, I would highly suggest trimming again on all positions. Because if we gap up tomorrow and everything's up a couple percent, I think they're going to slam it into low days by the close. I don't think smart money is going to hold 
any shares into the weekend. If they do, I think that's extremely bullish. So that's also something to note. If, and we, if we stay near the highs into the close, I think that's that's quite bullish, unless over the weekend Iran gets attacked. Um, <laughs> funny thing is, if we sell off into the close tomorrow, I think if Israel doesn't attack over the weekend, we will gap up again Monday. The thing is, these gap ups and then sell offs in the day are bearish divergences. So that just increases the odds of bearishness, but it's something to be mindful of. So I'm currently about 30% cash into the Patreon account. And if we have a gap up tomorrow, I might trim more just to see what happens. And you know, if we have some super rally, then we'll make money, trust me. But if this is a super crash, we need to already have some cash on the sides and we need to be ready to just sell everything. Um, if this isn't a super crash, then we'll trim tomorrow. And if we find a base here and things doesn't escalate and everything starts rallying, then, you know, we'll trade it as needed. But if, you know, Israel attacks Iran and there is a crash, then we need to cut our positions and let the market process the catalyst and decimate everything. And then by the, by the dips of the strongest companies, right? It's like if Tesla goes to sub a hundred dollars, <laughs> like I'm not joking when I, I'll put 70% of my money into it in options, which will give thousands of percents of returns. And that's what we would do. So if we risk, you know, pure capital here, when we go to find the bottom, we'll get 2026 contracts and buy option contracts. And we'll make way more money than we would have with regular ordinary shares. And that's how, even though we'll risk, we, there's a risk profile here of another 20% of the portfolio if there's a super crash. And the thing is, it's not guaranteed. But if there is a super crash and we lose 20% of our portfolio in a single day because everything's down 10%, right? Then we go cash and we buy options near the bottom, two years out, three years out. And if you do that, you're going to make thousands of percents of return, okay? Um, that's at least my plan. Like I said, I'm still trying to open up cash. If we gather up tomorrow, I'm going to try to get to 40%, 45%. And I would highly suggest you do the same so that then you're only risk, risking half of your portfolio for um, this up being a possible bottom. And if it is the bottom, then we'll get back in once it's proven to be the bottom. But, you know, three weeks ago, the charts didn't look like this, right? Three weeks ago, when I called the bearish thesis, it was March 28th. And it was literally the, t the highest point of the market. I called the top of the market with my bear thesis, right? Three weeks ago, Mara was not down to $14. It was at $23, right? It looked like it was curling up. It looked like that this was a one, two, three, four, five wave structure, right? It looked bullish. The entire market looked bullish on March 28th. And then it didn't look extremely bearish until we started breaking important levels, right? And now that we've broken important levels, like the risk management profile has to happen, right? Now we have to be risk adverse because it's like, it's really showing its ass, right? But there is small hints of bullishness here, right? That could say something for us, right? We have a little curl here with the, the RSI on Mara near oversold territory, right? Like. But I'm actually highly concerned about a super crash because if all of these are finished five wave structures with a war catalyst, and they've already given us a sign of this, man, like stocks being down 40 and 50% in, in three weeks, just complete sales, right? How about like the fact that over the weekend with the first attack, you know, um, oh, I forgot to even show Ethereum, right? They were able to drop some of these 30%, this is also a bullish thesis. I think this, I, let me actually say this real quick. Ethereum is a much clearer chart in my opinion than Bitcoin. And the only thesis here is this is a 50% retracement. There is no other possibility of a wave four. Either this is wave four or it's a finished five wave structure. So, and so far we've supported a weekly demand zone with the 50% retracement, which also gives me a little bit of a bullish side 
you know, even though everything looks like it's burning, a little bit of a bullishness that there could be a rally here. But, you know, as I reanalyze the market, just like my bearish goggles thesis, I actually see a thesis for a super crash. And that's why I made this video. That's why I wanted to cover this. And if that happens, we need to have a plan because you're going to, like, trust me, I've, I've been in the position where I hold things and I don't understand what's actually happening. And before you know it, your account's down 70%, right? Like, I've been there before. I've been trading since 2015. Like, it can easily happen. And we need to be, we need to have, be cognizant and open to the fact that that could actually happen. When we have, oh, that's something else I need to, to show you. This, so Dixie, the dollar, the US dollar, and the US 10 year are both inverse to the stock market, right? Right now, I had, and this is another catalyst that's bullish until we break above this. You know, we have been in supply for a few days now, right? That's the dollar. This is the US 10 year. We've been in supply. Now, given there's another angle of supply right here, but this is a pivot high, and if, this is definitely a pivot high. If we broke above this 5%, and that's actually a monumental number. When the US 10 year gets over 5%, like the whole market just gets bloody and crashes. Right? But right now we're in supply of both of these. And if Iran is attacked by Israel and they both start going in all at war, I think both of these will, will hit above this. And if this breaks out, this, these both instantly, both instantly also pressure the stock market. The dollar also pressures crypto. So this is another catalyst that although isn't bearish yet, you know, we're in that that line in the sand area. We're in the supply area of both zones. And you know, if nothing happens with, with Iran, both of them could literally make lower lows because that's what I have mapped out here. I actually have this as an ABC structure for the dollar. And this is the thesis that you wanna see play out for Bitcoin going to 150K, right? If the dollar starts going under 100 right here, once the dollar breaks under this pivot low, watch risk on assets go nuts. The day, the week that the dollar gets under $99, everything's going to soar like crazy. And it's going to start with the rejection if we reject here. So the question is, right, is this an ABC here, an ABC, and then an ABC with the truncated pip, or is this thing going to go way higher and come all the way up to here, right, and be a much higher wave B? That could happen, to be honest. And the Israel Israel Iran conflict is literally what's going to cause this. So, you know, this is inverse to equities. So if we start breaking above these levels, then I'm going to that's going to be a bearish occurrence, right? If this goes above this, if the dollar goes above 107, if US 10 year gets above, you know, 4.7%, and especially above 5%, if Tesla gives up 140. If Bitcoin gives up 56,000, if Apple gives up that previous pivot low, if all of this happens in synchrony, like that's a massive market crash coming. And that's what I'm looking for. So I know I've been redundant and this video is probably an hour and a half long, but I wanted to get the point across. And hopefully you guys understand this. And if you guys are a little bit more panicky or if you feel like you have too much money in the market, then take more money out, you know? It's like, I'll say it a million times, if, if this is the bottom of the next Elliott wave count, you know, if this is the bottom of wave three, wave three will be 100 to 200 to 300% easily. And then you have wave four, which is shallow, and then wave five. Like, if this is the bottom of the bull cycle, we're going way higher. So it's like, if you don't want to risk what you can't afford to risk, or if you're super uneasy, then de-risk more if you need to. But I'm willing to risk, you know, another... 20% and it might, might not even be 20% less like I don't think every stock would open up 20% down like it's most likely like 5 to 10% maybe 12% right I'm willing to risk that to get that confirmation of a super market crash and then go cash and then do options near bottom two years out and make thousands of percents make more money than we would make because if this crash happens I can promise you that bottom is going to create a super rally much bigger than the one we would have from here. And that's something we also need to be mindful of. 
Um, but there is a bull thesis here, but it is paper thin, right? It is paper thin with only a few key indicators, right? And realistically, if, if you want to consolidate because of this, then I wouldn't even be mad at that, right? If we start going down here in around 56K, if you consolidate all of your crypto into Bitcoin and we give up 56K, then it's like, okay, there's a risk, right? But what, how low can everything else go? What about Tesla, right? It's like, if this is truly the bottom for Tesla and we can see $600 by 2026, right? What's three to 5%, you know, like let's go down to like 135, 10% risk. Like realistically, 10% risk in Tesla, but Mara, Riot, and all those could go much lower. You know, they could drop another 50%, right? Just from weakness. But that is the question. And tomorrow, I think we'll give us another good idea of what's happening. Uh, Crypto is currently rallied today. Sol's up 8%. Bitcoin's up 4%. ETH is up 3%. Um, there's a small paper thin bullish thesis here, but overall over the last three weeks they've extremely broken every chart and there's a catalyst for a super crash so um if you have any questions or want to talk to me feel free but i am going to try to trim on the pop tomorrow if there's a pop uh in my personal account i will actually probably hedge as well which means i'll probably buy three week out put contracts on like spy Actually, I already have like next Friday put contracts on SPY just so that if there was an actual super crash, like all within a week, then it would be up thousands of percent. And that's something to consider. But yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, this wasn't the best video to hear, but, you know, I, I, I'm just reanalyzing the market. And for the last three weeks, like it's looking extremely bearish, right? And realistically, like if there's no attack, even if in the bearish case, we should see some type of relief rally. But, you know, if Israel attacks Iran, um, Wall Street has the catalyst and they, <laughs> they've unloaded enough shares to drop it even more. You know, like they could pull the shit. But we collectively have in market internals, right? We have Apple, we have Tesla, we have Bitcoin, we have ARK. You know, um, we have all of these that are on just like the last line in the sand for a bullish thesis. And if they give them up, then it's obvious that this is a multi-week correction that's going to get much worse. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully this gives you guys an idea. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm down to FaceTime or any of that shit. All right. Cheers.